Curcumin and the turmeric it comes from are very popular, very popular supplements because they seem to work. Many people get relief, for instance, from the pain of arthritis when they take it. But why does it work? Let me tell you why I asked that question. It's very clear if you take turmeric or curcumin, very little of it is absorbed. If I take a thousand milligrams of curcumin, for instance, about 980 to 990 milligrams of that thousand are passed out in the toilet. Virtually all that goes through and the blood levels are trivial, very, very small, uh, low blood levels. Yet it seems to have these beneficial effects. So, uh, unfortunately, many manufacturers have focused on trying to force absorption. They've add, uh, additives like uh, piperine or bioperin or make nanoparticle preparations or uh, phospholipid uh, preparations to force absorption. And you can indeed increase absorption several fold, though that has not yet been shown to be of any further benefit. But the fact remains, there's actually a fair amount of clinical evidence that when you take the standard form of curcumin, that is the poorly absorbed form, that you do have a reduction in pain and swelling in rheumatoid arthritis and in osteoarthritis, particularly knee arthritis, reduction in inflammatory markers in the bloodstream. You have a reduction in some markers for diabetes, a reduction in triglycerides. You can have some skin rashes improve and even depression improves. So the evidence remains that curcumin as a poorly absorbed form works. But why does it work? Well, the evidence is clarifying. There's now new evidence to suggest that curcumin has very powerful effects on restoring the integrity of the intestinal barrier. There are several barriers in the intestinal lining that protect you from all the stuff that goes into your gastrointestinal tract, food, uh, bacteria, fungi, viruses. Your body has to protect itself, so there's a very complex intestinal barrier where curcumin restores several steps in that intestinal barrier, including the mucus lining. So that may be part of the reason why curcumin works in the intestinal barrier. Another uh, thing to be aware of is that curcumin is a potent antibacterial agent effective against unhealthy bacterial species like Staphylococcus aureus and E. coli. It's also a moderate antifungal. Well, why is that important? Well, if you respond positively to curcumin or turmeric, let's say with a reduction in knee arthritis pain, or improvement of mood, or some other benefit. What if the whole problem came from disruption of your bowel flora, such as SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, or fungal overgrowth, small intestinal fungal overgrowth, or disruption of the mucus lining or the intestinal barrier, and curcumin is simply uh, causing you to feel better because you had positive effects within the intestinal uh, intestines themselves, not because the curcumin got into your blood bloodstream, went to the joint, and, and exerted an anti-inflammatory effect. I think the evidence is pointing towards much of curcumin's benefits being exerted via bowel flora, both bacterial and fungal, and the intestinal barrier. So if you do respond in a positive way to curcumin, I would encourage you to explore your bowel flora composition. You could do a stool analysis to see what it looks like. You could explore SIBO and SIFO. That's what we do in many of my programs. It's a more com complicated pathway to follow, but it's extremely powerful. One of the problems though is if you ask your doctor, you say, hey doc, I think I have SIBO or I have fungal overgrowth. He's gonna say 99% of the time, I don't know what you're talking about. Don't waste my time. You're fine. Did you consult Dr. Google? All that kind of stuff they like to say. And mo almost always you're left on your own. Or if you have a very progressive doctor, such as a gastroenterologist, he may say something like this. Here, take this prescription for rifaximin, which is an antibiotic. But it doesn't tell you whether you have SIBO. doesn't tell you how you got it doesn't tell you how to increase the efficacy because rifaximin only works 60% of the time. Uh, doesn't tell you how to increase its effectiveness. Doesn't tell you how to prevent recurrence. Doesn't tell you how to re rebuild a healthy microbiome. Doesn't tell you anything. So the conventional solutions for SIBO and SIFO and disrupted bowel flora dysbiosis are woefully unsatisfactory. So you're left on your own. And for that reason, I've put together a lot of information for everybody to take a look at if you think you have SIBO, SIFO, or at least severe dysbiosis and or disruption of your intestinal barrier. You can start with many, uh, I have some videos on YouTube, so that, that's helpful. Take a look at my Wheat Belly blog where I have at least a dozen conversations about this. Some of my undoctored blog also. But those of you who really think you have SIBO or SIFO, 
uh, I invite you to join my conversations in my undoctored inner circle because this is a more complex conversation. It really helps to have a back and forth conversation. That's what we do. We have a two-way video conversation uh, at least once a week and we talk about uh, how to increase efficacy of what you're doing. How you can do this on your own using herbal antibiotic regimens with proven effectiveness. How to increase your response rate, how to monitor your response, how to uh, verify that you do indeed have one of these conditions, what you can do, steps you can take to prevent common recurrences, and how to rebuild a healthy microbiome. So that's all in my undoctored inner circle. But at the very least, I want to get you thinking, if you have a positive response to curcumin, that you might have severely disrupted bowel flora, and that's the key to health for you.